talk about ratios. Um, this is the beginning of a new unit. Um, your goal for this lesson is I can write ratios to compare quantities. Remember that you can pause, fast forward, or rewind this video anytime that you need to if I'm going too fast or too slow, or if you need to remove something. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So if you look at this picture, I really want you to analyze it based on the colors of the paper clips. So what do you see? Well, we have two red paper clips, we have six blue paper clips, and we have eight paper clips in total. So it's really important to make good observations. All right, so let's talk about quantities and ratios. Well, when we talk about things or items, there's many different ways to compare quantities. And quantity means an amount of something. So a ratio is one way to compare those quantities. And a ratio is a comparison of two quantities, but the way that we do that is by using division. There are three ways to write ratios, and I'm going to show you these ways right here using the picture that you just saw. So we talked about there being two red paper clips and six blue paper clips in the picture. Now, how do we write this as a ratio? Well, we can write 2 colon 6 to the word 2 and then 6 or 2 slash 6. Now, those are the three ways to write frac to write, I'm sorry, to write ratios. So again, we use, can use a colon, we can use the two word, or we can use the slash. The important thing to remember, though, is that we always need to have our answer in the most simplified version as possible. So if we had the fraction 2 over 6, how do you simplify that? Well, it would be 1 over 3. And so when you write your ratios, you're actually going to have to go back and make sure that they're in the most simplified version as possible. So here we would have 1 colon 3, 1, 2, 3, or 1 slash 3. And we're going to practice tons of examples with that here. Okay. So we're going to use paper clips again, but we have a slightly different picture. So write the ratio in the simplest form that compares the number of red paper clips to the number of blue paper clips. So the first thing is look at the picture. How many red paper clips do you have? Well, you have one. How many blue paper clips do you have? You have three. Is that in the most simplified form as possible? Yes. So then write that ratio in three ways. 1 colon 3, 1, 2, 3, or 1 slash 3. Any of those ways are an acceptable method of writing ratios. Now, what does all of this mean? What does 1 colon 3 mean when you're talking about this picture? Well, it means for every one paper clip, oops, Let's try that again. For every one red paper clip, there are three blue paper clips. All right, let's try another example. So here we are moving away, away from paper clips. Okay, write the ratio in the simplest form that compares the number of suns to the number of moons, and then explain its meaning. Okay, so let's count the suns first. We have one, two, three, and four. How many moons? One, two, three, four, five, six. So, I always say, if this was a fraction, if you had 4 over 6, how would you simplify that? Well, you would simplify it as 2 over 3. That's how you need to write your ratio. Either 2 colon 3, 2 2 3, or 2 slash 3. 
and we already went ahead and simplified it before we wrote our ratios out. Now what is the meaning of this ratio? Well, for every two, take our first number and our first item, sons, there are, take our second number and our second item, three moons. And it's as simple as that. Okay, let's move on to example number three. So these are going to be a little bit different. If you were not understanding the last two examples, make sure you go back and rewatch those before you move on. So in example number three, we have a bit of a word problem with a chart. Several students name their favorite flavor of gum. Write the ratio that compares the number who chose fruit to the total number of students. So when we look at this chart over here, we see peppermint, cinnamon, fruit, and spearmint. Well, let's take the first part of our ratio. How many students chose fruit? Three. So I'm going to write that in my box right here. Now the second part of the ratio is asking, how, what are the total number of students? Well, we need to add them all up. So 9 plus 8 plus 3 plus 1. You will notice that I included the 3 from the fruit into the total number of students because the total number includes those who chose fruit as well. When we add these all up, we get 9 plus 8 is 17, 17 plus 3 is 20, 20 plus 1 is 21. Now, we have our ratio. I always like to write it as a fraction over here to make sure it's simplified. That is not as simplified as it can go. To simplify it, it would be 1 over 7. So over here, the ratio is 1 colon 7, 1 to 7, or you guessed it, 1 slash 7. So 1 out of 7 preferred what? Think about it. One student out of every seven preferred which flavor? You may think it's spearmint, but it's not. Go back to our original computation. We were trying to figure out how many preferred fruit. So fruit is the answer. All right, let's try another example. Example number four. Monday's yogurt sales are recorded in the table. So we have another table over here with some information. Write the ratio that compares the sales of strawberry yogurt to the total sales. Then explain its meaning. So over here we need to find strawberry. Here it is. 8 for strawberry. Now we need to calculate the total of the number sold. So we have 3 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8. Add them all up. 3 plus 6 is 9. 9 plus 7 is 16. 16 plus 8 is 24. Move over here. Write it as a fraction. 8 over 24. Am I as simplified as possible? Not quite. This would turn into 1 over 3. So when you go to write your ratio over here, the ratio could be written as 1 colon 3, 1, 2, 3, or 1 slash 3. And when you go to explain what this means, it means 1 out of 3 preferred which flavor? Think about it. Go back to your original problem. What was the ratio that you were comparing? strawberry. There you go. The key is to make sure you're completing the ratio in the correct order and that you simplify. Let's try another example. A pet store sold the animals listed in the table in one week. Write the ratio of cats to pets sold that week. Then explain its meaning. So look at the table. We have birds, dogs, and cats. How many cats did they sell? Eight. What's the total number? Well, add them up. Ten plus one 
plus 14 is 24. 24 plus 8 is 32. I like to write it as a fraction first so that I know if I need to simplify. And I do need to simplify that. And I would get 1 over 4. So how do I write my ratio? 1 colon 4, 1, 2, 4, or 1 slash 4. So let's put that into words. 1 out of 4 preferred which pet? Go back to your original problem. You're finding cats. So they preferred cats. All right, let's try another one. So this one we'll have to do as a class. So I'm going to make up some information here so that we can solve the following problems. So if you're doing this in class, you can use the actual people in your class. And if not, you can use the data that I made up. So look around the classroom. How many people are wearing hoodies? Well, I'm going to say 10 people. How many people are wearing t-shirts? I'm going to say 22. How many people are wearing hoodies and t-shirts? So this would be the total number of students. Well, 10 plus 22 is 32. All right, so now let's take a look at some questions based on that data. I'm going to rewrite my data up here so that I remember. Hoodies equal 10, t-shirts equal 22, and all equals 32, okay? You'll have it on your notes, but I have it on the previous slide. So now with that data, we're going to go ahead and write some ratios. What is the ratio of hoodies to t-shirts in the classroom? Well, I have 10, and I like to write it as a fraction first, over 22. Is that as simplified as possible? No. So simplify it. You would get 5 over 11. But we need to write it as a ratio. Let's write it all three ways. 5 colon 11, 5 to 11, or 5 slash 11. Let's look at the second question. What is the ratio of t-shirts to hoodies? So now it's the same question but flipped around. So we have 22 t-shirts, and you know I like to write it as a fraction first, over 10 hoodies. We know it can simplify because we just did it up here. So what is it? 11 over 5. But we need to write it in the three different ways that you write ratios. So we would have 11 colon 5, 11 to 5, and 11 slash 5. All right, let's take a look at the third question. What is the ratio of the number of t-shirts to the total number of students? So we had 22 students wearing t-shirts and we had 32 students total. We need to make sure to simplify this. If we simplify it, we're going to get 11 over 16. Make sure that you write your ratio in three different ways. 11 colon 16, 11 to 16, and 11 slash 16. Last but not least, what is the ratio of the total number of students to the number of hoodies? So the total number of students was 32. The total number of hoodies was 10. We need to make sure that we simplify. So this time, we have to figure out what our GCF is. Our GCF is 2. We're going to get 16 over 5. And we need to make sure that we write our ratio in three different ways. 16 colon 5, 16 to 5, and 16 slash 5. That was a great example of using real life data to write ratios. Make sure that you simplify every single time. And the easiest way to do that is to write it as a fraction before you write it as a ratio. Okay, 
Let's talk about some equivalent ratios. So we know when fractions are equivalent, they equal each other. And we know that we can write ratios in many different ways. So I'm going to use different colors and you can use different shapes or draw arrows on your paper. But let's go ahead and see if we can match the ratios to each other that are equivalent. And remember that equivalent means equal. Okay, so I'm going to take the first one over here, 6 colon 60. I'm going to circle that one in red. So which one of these would be equivalent to 6 colon 60? Well, I know that 6 goes into 60 10 times. So that would simplify to 1 over 10. Let me see here. Oh, here is 1 to 10 written in a different way. Excellent. Okay, now I'm going to go with 9 colon 12. So 9 colon 12, I know that that can simplify to 3 colon 4. Let's see if I have it here. Here it is, but it's in fraction form. Excellent. 3 over 4. So 9 colon 12 and 3 over 4, those are equivalent ratios. All right, let's do our next one, 6 colon 8. So I know that 6 colon 8 can simplify to 3 colon 4. So let's see if we have that here. Let's see, let's see. Oh, we have it again right here, but let me see. Yep, all right, so we have this guy twice. Okay, so let's try another one, 5 over 6. So 5 over 6 cannot simplify anymore. Can we find an equivalent ratio that makes it double or triple itself? Well, if it was doubled, it would be 10 over 12, which dun, 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 is right here. And it's written with a colon. Okay? All right, now let's try 5 over 2. And let's see, how can I differentiate this from the other red? I will box it inside. So 5 over 2, so that cannot simplify anymore, okay? Because remember, ratios, they're not mixed numbers, so don't change that into a mixed number, okay? Um, so let's double it. Let's see if there's 10 over 4, and boom, here it is, 10 over 4. All right, and last but not least, we have 3 colon 15. So let's see, that would simplify to 1 colon 5. And we have this guy right here, one, two, five. So each one had one match, except these, these guys shared a match right there. Excellent, excellent, excellent. That's a good practice for simplifying ratios. Okay, I want you to try these on your own. So what you're gonna do is you're going to go ahead and look at the picture, look at how they want the ratio, Make sure you write it as simplified as possible. I also want you to write the ratio all three ways. So you go ahead and do that and I will do it as well. All right, make sure that you go ahead and check your work there. So for pens to pencils, you should end up with three colon four, 
three, two, four, and three slash four. And then for pennies to dimes, you should end up with one colon three, one, two, three, or one slash three. Okay, so we have another ratio chart here. So a class has six boys and 15 girls. What is the ratio of boys to girls? So over here, I'm gonna write as a fraction, six over 15, so we have boys, girls. Can that simplify? Well, it can. Three can go into six two times, and three can go into 15 five times, so it simplifies two to five. So I'm gonna write it my three ways. 2 colon 5, 2, 2, 5, and then 2 slash 5. So the table shows the number of books Salvador has read. Find the ratio of mystery books to the total. So remember, we're going to have to add them all up and then explain its meaning. So at mystery books, it looks like we're at 10, and I'm going to write it down here as my fraction. And then we have to add them all up for the bottom part of the ratio. 10 plus 7 is 17. 17 plus 5 is 22. 22 plus 2 is 24. And if we simplify this, we're going to get 5 over 12. So I'm going to go ahead and write it the three ways. So we have 5 colon 12, 5, 2, 12, and 5 slash 12. It's also asking us to explain its meaning, and I'm going to kind of draw an arrow down here because we don't have a lot of space. So what does this mean? Well, it means for every five mystery books, now what's our second part of the ratio? Total. There were... 12 total books read. And there you have it. Please do me a favor and cross out this last example on there. You do not need to complete that. All right, so this is the end of this lesson. Make sure that if you have any questions, that you rewind, fast forward, or pause the video, and you can always ask me.